Hello lovely people and welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial podcast. My name is Dominic and I am joined once again by my wonderful co-host Jerry. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you Tom. You alright? Yes, yes. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this podcast. Uh, this is our 10th episode. We're into double digits. That is incredible, really. How you yeah. go? We're coming up to our year. Coming up to our year. Coming up to the year. Um we it is the oh i've written down that it's the 18th it's not the 18th because we were going to record it last week but we did change it so it is the 25th of march 2022 um a little bit later in the month again as we recorded quite late in the last month for for, with our wonderful guest adam which by the way what a (laughs) adam what a what a person adam he's a legend that was such absolutely brilliant i had such a laugh with him on that that podcast he's brilliant yeah, my 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 mother gave us the feedback that we were a bunch of children, but it was a it was a it was a fantastic, wonderful dynamic that I absolutely enjoyed, um, and I really enjoyed not only the comedy element but the latter half of the serious element. Yes, so just wanted to which put lasted that longer. Which lasted longer. We said that, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. It, was, it it but it flew past. But re- listening to the podcast again, it was it was good. He gave us a good insight. Yeah. Abs- absolutely so um adam you're you're welcome back on the podcast anytime anytime um definitely absolutely absolutely um just as a note as i always say the, the views on this podcast are our own because we do wish to keep our jobs by the uh, by the end of it indeed <laughs> so we say through gritted teeth um and this this month's podcast we've got a little bit of a theme um I've, I've written uh, the theme down, but it's probably a little bit slightly different from what I've written down again. I should have really reread these notes before <laughs> before we started. Um, but we've gone for a bit of a April Fool's slash... I think this is going to be our big conspiracy theory uh, or, or extraterrestrial uh, podcast this month. Oh, yeah. I'm so looking forward to this. This, take, this takes me back to my x-files days when i was a big fan of the x-files used to watch it really got into it did loads of research got loads of books all about unidentified aerial (laughs) phenomenon and um i've just been fascinated by it ever since well and not just that but anything kind of paranormal as well so it does go beyond just that and and i've got some interesting stories to tell as well for people who yeah for people who are um and and even people like myself i i didn't part of me whenever i i've i've looked into things over the years you know even as a kid i used to I used to love reading you know um sort of books about uh, you know real life ghost stories and ufos and things like that and and um i've always been fascinated by it because you kind of you know, I've always wondered what it would be like to experience something like that. And then much later on in life, I did. I'm so, so looking not, forward to this. Oh, it, honestly, I, it, you can't, and, and stuff that you just can't explain that I've seen, but my wife has witnessed as well, that it just stuff that's happened that, like I say, makes it, the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. And you I, think, you can't explain this. For, for context for the listeners, I don't know these either. I don't know yes, these that's are right. stories I haven't said that, any of these. that yeah. Jerry's referring to. I am looking forward to this. This is I've got the same level of excitement as when we did the uh, fragrances one. Yes. Where I just written on the notes, Jerry go ham. <laughs> 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 and I have that mm, level of ham. <laughs> yeah, we have a new uh, greeting for myself and myself and Jerry have our own <laughs> greeting. We, the 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 PC version is instead of the the man the myth the legend is the ham the pith and the legend. Uh, we shall keep it PC and we won't tell on the other one. <laughs> no, no one needs to know the other version. No, no one needs to know the other. It's version. a secret. <laughs> but we'll start off with a little bit of April Fool's stuff because I I like a good practical joke, uh, and it will go into our food of the month. Where we've got the best April Day, April Fool's Day food <laughs> pranks. <laughs> I, 
I haven't got anything to contribute to this, so I'm just I'm itching to hear your ones. I've never done a food prank. Have you not? Uh, is that no? Have I? No, I think I once put chili sauce, really hot ghost pepper sauce, onto mm. cocktail sausage and <laughs> said to my brother-in-law, "Try this, it's amazing." And uh, yeah, poor guy almost had a heart attack. <laughs> I'm. When it comes when it comes to April Fool's Day's pranks or any pranks in any in in, in any form or ver- variety, I am one that f- ensures that it's got no harm that can happen to people. So I, I don't I'm not too keen on the on chilies on things. I and feel things like I that. feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but but you know uh, like if you're going to do an April Fool's Day prank, I'm I, I think we've got it on our poignant questions, but I'm not too keen on like. Things like announcing to the world that you're pregnant and suddenly saying April Fools, that feels a bit odd. Yeah, I know. A I've got extreme. a bit I've got a bit tangent. But um uh, like so the the one that I've done and I've done that I've done in university is um so I've done I've done two. I've done uh mustard inside of like <laughs> uh like cupcakes. <laughs> so just replacing the the, the inside that's, frosting with mustard. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I mean, you because because some of the recommendations English is, mustard, I'm yeah, assuming. English mustard. Oh, dumb. What's the yellow? One? There's a yellow one, isn't there? I can never remember who. There's a yellow, one. yeah, the English mustard, just yeah. bright yellow, brutal. Yeah, it's like a bolt through the sinus. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, like, so you just replaced that, um, and then I was looking. <laughs> I went on the internet today and I found this. Um, for those that have watched Top Gear, will know where that's from. <laughs> uh, one of the ones that they sort of said is you you can you could make it so it's it's meat instead of cake, and then the mustard wouldn't be too bad if it was like you know a meatloaf of mustard. Yeah, true. It just it looks like a cake, and you would. But no, I've done it with cake and then put mustard on it. On it, and the other one that I've done, which is actually really horrible because you, you don't realize how horrible this substance is when you've got a lot of it bearing in mind you do use this every day is um toothpaste in oreos so that splitting up so... oreos and just putting toothpaste on instead that is vile <laughs> i actually feel sick thinking about it it's horrible <laughs> tooth, tooth, to the toothpaste one. and because consider, like i said considering you put toothpaste in your mouth every day you know, have you ever done it where you've just put a bit too much toothpaste on and you've got to yeah. brush your teeth and you get three quarters of through like <laughs> Oh dumb. Honestly, it's making me feel sick. Cause you're not supposed to swallow toothpaste either, are you? No, it's it's fluoride's apparently very harmful for the stomach. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I'm happy to have it in an Oreo. I'm not gonna lie, most people took like an Oreo and then went there like that and didn't eat it, if I'm honest. What was really cruel is that I only did half the number of Oreos. <laughs> so some of the Oreos were normal. <laughs> Wait, but if you think about Oreos, because that filling you could you could substitute that for so many things, couldn't you? Mm, like yeah. grout. That's a bit extreme, but yes. Silicon gel. <laughs> oh, ugh. that's silicon gel is horrible. That's awful. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, you could. What? While we're on the subject of Oreo, slight tangent. What's? Are, are you an Oreo fan to begin with? I do like Oreos, but they don't have much flavour. Is it just me? Okay. You, so what I'm version of Oreo do you like mo- most? Just the OG. <laughs> No, it's got to be double stuffed. Double stuffed every single time. What, with double the amount of toothpaste? <laughs> double the amount of whatever Oreo filling is. Silica gel. Silica gel. <laughs> you have to go through a whole tube of that to get double stuffed. <laughs> oh, dear. Double so, stuffed? I'm going to have to look out for that now, du- Double stuffed is the Double the stuffed. Best. So it's... Regular Oreo, but just with twice the amount of filling. Mm, yes. Oh, because that filling is is uh... is the best bit. Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, yeah, I I I would Double quite happily stuff. submit a petition to the government <laughs> and tell them that all Oreos should be double stuffed, regardless. Just... Start it on change dot org. Yep. Yeah, they should all be double stuffed, and then double stuffed Oreos should be double double stuffed. 
and then then with the balance in the world would be right again i think that would solve all of the world's problems at the moment would it though yes because if you were to get double double stuffed oreos you get a pack of oreos and you'll only have about three in there (laughs) it is true i think in a normal pack of oreos you do get (laughs) 20 and in a double stuffed you only get 12 (laughs) right so in a double double stuffed you will literally get three yeah Maybe four. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. 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 But there's there's lo- loads of other ones that I've always wanted to try. Um, so you've got like mashed potato icing on a cake. Um, or you can go, <laughs> oh, you'll love this one because I know how much you love fruit and chocolate. <laughs> God. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. So Mentally, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I forget, I've written a bunch of notes on the computer. I've copied and pasted this, and I've got a bunch of things that you can't see, and I forget that you don't know what I'm uh-huh. going to say, so this is good. So, um, Ferrero Rocher, you're a fan of a Ferrero Rocher? Love a Ferrero Rocher. Who doesn't? There, there is a brilliant story of someone unwrapped all the Ferrero Rochers and then took Brussels sprouts, dipped them in chocolate, and then rewrapped them, and then resealed the box so you could even, like, so we glued oh the sticker God. back on. <laughs> so it's almost as if it was an unopened Ferrero Rocher box. And then just waited for their father-in-law to get the box for Christmas. <laughs> then wrapped it and gave it to their father-in-law for Christmas. <laughs> and then, I'm, I'm bearing in mind, not only did you have to cover in chocolate, but like full on, uh, like the hazelnuts on the outside. like Hazelnuts um, as well. As in, I you suppose know, you would know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you didn't have that, you would know straight away something's yeah. wrong. So it looks oh, like an exact god. Ferrero Rocher on the outside. Oh my god! And and then that you can just imagine that initial bite, that joy, and then that sudden horror as you realise what you're eating. Because Brussels sprouts are the single worst food known to man. So <laughs> they they're pretty rough. The it, it's cur- no, I was just going to say, it doesn't matter what you try and do with them. <laughs> I've looked at recipes for Brussels sprouts, and you can put as much bacon and whatever you want in there, but you still, at the end of the day, you still have to bite into a sprout <laughs> at some do, point. How to, how to do successful Brussels sprouts recipe. Put in the sprouts, lots of butter, lots of bacon, throw away the sprouts, cook, enjoy. <laughs> I would I'd say I'd go so far as say you write the the perfect recipe for sprouts you'd write a whole list of stuff like bacon and butter and um I don't know just anything anything nice say a couple of nice things dom a nice of ingredients nice uh, oh, yeah uh you know cheese roast beef cheese roast beef cheese yeah. and then, and make sure that there are no sprouts in there <laughs> yeah it's a sproutless sprout recipe. Well, I grew up with a kids program. I think it was called Skidoo. And it had a green alien um like character who was a bit it was a bit dopey. Reminds me it was a little bit like Zippy from Rainbow if we're going to okay. go for something a bit more your generation. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry just revealing your age there. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind. Uh, I'm 30, so what? <laughs> um and <laughs> they go on about this recipe. He goes, I really want to make this thing. It's like, you know, a kid's, standard kids program where they do, like, they, they make something. And he's like, right, and we're going to make a strawberry surprise. And everyone's like, and the, the, the human that's with him, with, with the puppet, she's like, okay, well, what's the ingredients? And he's like, right, milk, ice. And you're thinking, all right, okay, it's going to be a, a strawberry smoothie. Bananas. <laughs> and... Anyway, goes through all like, you know, blend it, make it, etc. And she goes, I'm really confused. Why is it called Strawberry Surprise? And he goes, well, the surprise is there's no strawberries. Ah. <laughs> and I don't know why. I just suddenly thought of that when you, when you said about... <laughs> What's it called? Spidoo? Skidoo, I think. Skidoo. I want to, I want to say Skidoo. I'm, I'm actually going to Google this. Sorry, I know this annoys you, Mum, when, when I do this. <laughs> I think it was called that. Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, am I the only one that watched a, a show, Skidoo, The Learning Alien? <laughs> yeah. I think you are, Dom. It is. 
It it definitely is. I think they televised it and went, we only have one viewer. It's called Skidoo the Learning Alien. Help me. Oh, it's not. It's a, there's a... The only records are an old link. It was later than 1995. And it was a CBBC program. But yeah. I'm Googling it as well. S K I D O O. Yeah. Uh, th- and then the learning alien. Big alien. Yeah, it's no, it's not like a small little puppet. The alien is, I mean, his head is bigger than the the lady that he's with, um, by a long way. <laughs> I find that kind of freaky. He, it was quite freaky, freaky. But yes, that was that was the program that they did. He did, and it's the surprise is there's no strawberries. Sh- and then she goes, oh, well, maybe you should call it a banana blitz. And it's like, oh, that's actually a better name for it, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. There's, there's my interest in childhood stories. The other one that I know will annoy you about the fruit in, in that is, um, you know, you, get the, you, you can get those mini, mini eggs that are wrapped uh, in Easter egg wrapping. You can get some really small, tiny ones, like a Cadbury's cream egg but smaller are they the solid ones yeah right full yes like pure chocolate chunky yes yes how upset would you be if you got a bunch of those you unwrapped them still looks like chocolate bit into it and it was a grape oh that <laughs> that would be full-on disappointment what well, chocolate covered grape yeah chocolate covered grape yeah that's should be, people should be locked up for <laughs> stuff doing stuff like that really i mean if, like I say, if I had my way, probably about sixty to seventy percent of the population would be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. Why wouldn't they? Because you can't just do stuff like that and get away with it. <laughs> There's a price to pay for stuff like this. Oh dear. Ha- th- and then the last one that I have written is doing an April Fool's prank the other way round. So. I've seen where people would take um, like a mayonnaise jar and I can't stand mayonnaise. I think mayonnaise is a vile substance, but um, and then they'd fill it with, I don't know, Greek yogurt. Oh, God. But instead of waiting for somebody unsuspecting to be like, oh, mayonnaise, I'm going to put that on my sandwich. What they do is in the middle of like, you know, a group of crowd of people, they take the mayonnaise jar, grab a spoon and stick the spoon in and eat the Greek yogurt. And everyone else is going, oh, what are you doing? Why are you eating mayonnaise? And they're like, oh, I'm eating Greek yogurt, which is, you know, much more tasty. So there is the reverse, Ah. reverse food, um, which I think is less harmful. It's just a bit like... (laughs) Unless you're lactose intolerant. Yes, if you're you're lactose intolerant, (laughs) do not do that. That would be a disaster. <laughs> then the joke's on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the joke would be on you. <laughs> and for the rest of the week. <laughs> and probably all over you when you Ralph. <laughs> yeah, when you Ralph. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my, my, my final question to you. Have you seen those videos <laughs> where it's like, is this... X or cake? Yes, I have. Where someone's made a super realistic cake. Yes, there is a a baker called, I think her name or her username, and she's on Instagram, but she's also on other. She's on YouTube as well. I'm sure of it. Um, and she's called Side Surf Cakes. Mm. And I kid you not, you can't tell what's she, she'll have. Like a whole load of apples, and then she'll say, "Which one's the cake?" Mm. And it just looking at it, going, "I don't know." They all look exactly the same, yeah. and then she cuts into the cake apple, and you go, "Oh, bloody hell!" Yeah, but she's done 
mad things like a bowl of spaghetti bolognese and you go mm. what what the hell and so it cuts into it and it's cake yeah <laughs> it's, it's incredible yeah 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 there's loads of that there's quite a few like that they all they go all over the internet and you know like an apple to a certain extent if you get the right lighting i can understand i mean you've got to be really artistic to get those striations and things like that but it's, it's it's when you like the bowl of spaghetti and things like that and and you look at it and you think my mind is blown absolutely just blown yeah dom this 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 lady takes it to rain man kind of levels there's no way you'd be <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell the difference really it's it's mm. it's a shocker she's done yes. it with bananas she's done it with she did a, a pot of i can't believe it's not butter yes and they just cut, just slice into it. There's somebody's hand. Yeah. It looked like there's somebody's hand was holding their jumper, and then she just cut into the hand. And you go, yeah. oh, that makes yeah. you jump. Yeah, oh my yeah. god, that's not a hand. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so realistic that when they yeah. do the cut, you're thinking, what is that bloke doing to his hand? And then it goes in. It's like, oh, it's cake. Yeah. And you're like, she yeah. took a slice out of her own head. She yeah. did. She did a self-portrait cake form. Yeah. And then cut and then cut a slice out of her own head, but she's standing next to it. And you go, whoa, <laughs> this is it's too Absolutely. much. That yeah, there are there are many people in the world that are so much more artistic than I am, and I mean I, I don't claim to be artistic in any way, shape, or form. That's not that's not who I am. But I just admire them so much, and and cake 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 especially because. So when we had Laura on and we were discussing food, baking is a science. Like you can't, yeah. you can't be like, right, I've got a hundred, it says 150 grams. So I'm going to do 160 grams. Like that 10 grams makes a real big difference to how the cake turns out. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, when I made muffins as part of the thing and it goes, right, leave them in the, in the tray for two minutes and then put them on the wire rack. And I left them for 10 minutes and they were so dry that it was like eating sand from the sahara desert so it's like <laughs> you don't you can't you can't fudge around a baking yeah and for them to be able to be that artistic and a, and people then say the cake is amazing and and tastes really good as well you think yeah that takes some that takes some that takes a combination of science and art artistry that i just i can't comprehend yeah it's incredible what they can do yeah but that's all the that's all the food pranks i have yeah and i've got nothing i can <laughs> add to that I've, I've never done a food prank apart from the ghost pepper sauce on the cocktail sauce <laughs> for which i i apologize <laughs> and i will atone for that somehow now you've got some ideas though for for your, for your wife and daughter yeah, you... <laughs> mustard I don't think I could do it. Toothpaste and an Oreo, I couldn't do that. <laughs> it's too cruel. I might try the mayonnaise one. Yeah, where you fill a mayonnaise jar up with something yeah. else. And then and watch people around you ralphing <laughs> yeah. as you're tucking in. What's wrong with you? I mean, you could do that with any horrible thing. Um, you know, uh, you could you could simplify it and take like a pickle jar and change the uh, change the liquid from pickle juice to oh. something tasty apple juice yeah 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 great yeah. Grape, grape juice grape juice yeah yeah that's doable <laughs> oh and they just start you just can't do it like, down yeah, the... you could just go oh i just fancy some oh. and start drinking from the pickle jar oh, oh that's horrible <laughs> i do know love people it. that do that anyway so do you love a bit of yeah do you love i i like a gherking juice. i do like a gherking but i don't drink the pickle juice Oh, I love a bit of pickle juice. It's very oh, good so you don't, you well, you apparently. Don't, I know, it's supposed to be very Well, good I couldn't food. guzzle it. I couldn't <laughs> guzzle it. Yeah, just... <laughs> oh, oh. That would make you Ralph. I've said Ralph three times now in the space of ten minutes. <laughs> right, let's go on to the fun bit. Let's go on to our poignant questions. Are you, you're go looking for forward to this one. I am. How do you want to do this? Because I know that you've got loads and loads of opinions do you want to still go through these questions individually or shall i shall opinions like belly buttons don <laughs> everyone's, everyone's got, one. got one um 
No, I think that's going to... No, I, I, I quite like the order. I, I read through the questions and thought, yeah, this okay. is pretty cool. Because otherwise it... it I, yeah. It could spiral out of control. It could spiral out of control. And actually, to be fair, it might be worth doing a follow-up. Mm, yeah, we've, we, we, we might. We I don't know how much that before we started the podcast. I think we, I think we did because honestly, this really could end up being a, a four-hour podcast, and and I do need to get to bed <laughs> at some point. I've got to take Rachel early in the morning to to work. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I only found that out about ten minutes before we started the <laughs> podcast. Um, but but there's loads of stuff here. To, there's loads yeah. to unpack. So. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, and personally, I'd love to do a follow up yeah. anyway, because I think it'd be really good to do some deep dive on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's do let's do a tread the water today. Yes. And then we'll see that. So folks, there could be some real big podcasts. Um, also, I apologize because we did talk for like 40 minutes before we started this podcast about. Our yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's good. That was cathartic. Definitely worth doing. Definitely required. Definitely required. Me and Jerry have very stressful jobs. Um, okay, so poignant question number one: Do you believe in UFOs? No. Next question. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> it could be a short podcast. <laughs> I just wanted to throw you. Um, I was not expecting that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Next. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, yes, I, I do. It's it's weird, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I do. One hundred percent believe in UFOs not i'm not necessarily saying that the <clears throat> oh, this is difficult you can't say categorically one way or the other where what they are and where they're from mm. or well, suppose where they're from well you don't even know we don't even know what they are but it's weird that i 100 percent believe in ufos because i've never actually seen one myself so, so do you the uf so i've i've written in my notes the ufo question in this to me is a trick question semantically ufo stands for unidentified flying object so if suddenly a rock was thrown over and i go what's that that's technically a ufo because it's an unidentified flying object until it then hits me in the face or something like that yeah i'm sorry about that Dom. <laughs> it was supposed to just miss your head it wasn't it was it was a certain somebody in the office on Thursday when I was on, fortunately not on the security, on the, on the other meeting, but um, was on a meeting with, with my manager and then he threw something at me and hit me in the head. Hope it wasn't anything weighty like a stapler or a No, no, it punch. was, um, it was a, like a stress ball. Photocopier? Oh. <laughs> Photocopier. <laughs> Unfortunately, what, I was also What are you corner. doing? Ah! <laughs> Uh, no, yes, he threw a stress ball at my head. Nice. <laughs> through one of my meetings. Nice. And unfortunately, because I'm in the corner, he can leg it from the other side <laughs> of the office. And it doesn't matter because it won't go anywhere. Anyway, sidetracked. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, uh, to me, this is, it's a little bit of a trick question when you think about the semantics of UFO. Anything that's flying and is not identified is technically a UFO. But I, in terms of do I believe stuff comes from elsewhere i don't think so and that's simply because i don't think that it would if something did come to the 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 earth it wouldn't be like oh i'm going to do a fly it wouldn't be like i'm going to come down a hover and all those kinds of like stereotypical like ufo things that you'd get from like war of the worlds and other other alien movies it would be more like oh there's a rocket ship going past or it would have it would you know land so to speak i don't think it would be, it would have the capabilities for space flight and inter atmosphere flight i'm getting very technical there so i i i think i agree with you i think that's the bit for me that i struggle with which is you know these are craft that have travels hundreds of millions of light years mm. and you know they seek us out as a planet and they come here and they just say oh look there's Dom Ow. there's Jerry <laughs> they're recording a podcast oh yeah. they're putting toothpaste in Oreos okay now we're just going to go now we're just going to go home accept an Oreo from me ever again, <laughs> yeah, ne- never again 
I need to buy the packet. It needs to be sealed. <laughs> right? And I might even get somebody else to taste, you know, just test it. Smell Before I tuck in. Yeah, like they used to do in, in with kings and stuff in <laughs> medieval times. Um, to make sure things weren't poisoned. I <laughs> Just a bit of dysentery. Can't argue with a bit of fluoride po- poisoning. Um, you, I, so... The UFO phenomenon actually is, uh, and I, I've read up about this so much, I've looked into it so much, and over the years my views on it have changed because so when I first started reading about UFOs, I thought, oh, it's a UFO, it's an unidentified flying object. It's a spacecraft that's being manned by an extraterrestrial being mm. that's from another planet or from another solar system or, you know, it's from somewhere out there in the galaxy. Um, but then... You, know, you have to follow the logic. You think, well, what are they doing? Mm. And they've been visiting us for decades. Mm. I mean, that's the the the, the World War Two um, uh, Air Force pilots in in the Pacific in the Second World War. Mm. That they used to be accompanied by what they they called them Foo Fighters. It was the they had these strange lights and orbs and things that used to follow them when when they were on their way to missions or coming back from a mission or. Um, you know they've been doing this for decades, and people have got. There are literally, when you look into it, there are hundreds of thousands of credible reports. Now, when I talk about credible reports as well, so this is another thing that reinforces why I actually believe in them. Because there are two things really. One is, do you believe them or don't you? It, mm. It's as binary as that. You can't just say, well, I kind of do. You either have to actually believe mm. that they exist. And you have to decouple that from what are they? Mm, yes. So you have to you have to acknowledge that there's something. Mm. So so I acknowledge that there's something, and y- you have you have people from the armed forces. You've had the you've had the incident and and things, uh, the uh, documents that have been declassified, video footage that's been declassified by the Pentagon. Literally, you can and and I've watched the interviews with the Air Force pilots. These are career military career people they're not stupid they're not stupid and they've got a reputation to uphold Mm. and they're relaying their stories and they're being very open as well saying i don't know what the hell it was Mm. but it was an object it was right in front of us i could i could see it Mm. it was it was moving but it was defying the laws of physics and it wasn't being captured on on some radars and and other radars it was other radars it wasn't um you know they're chasing this thing and and uh, you know you've got you've got witnesses you've got police that have witnessed things you've you know doctors um so many people have come forward and said look i'm just going to put my hand up and it and it's really gained traction mm. over the years because the floodgates are kind of open because you know, 40, 50 years ago, you'd say, oh, do you know what? Uh, I don't know how to say this, but I saw a UFO. Everyone would go, oh, yeah, here we go. E.T. phone home. Um, E.T. I mean, phone but home. No I can't do the impression. There'd, there'd be, That's a no... shit impression. <laughs> Sorry. Just saw. E.T. phone home. Phone home. Um, but, I mean, I, there's also no platform for them to share it. You know, in this in 2022, you know, you, somebody's got the oh. ability to put it on Facebook and within... Within hours, it's you know viral. Well, Facebook, you're right. There's podcasts now. You've got a lot, m- lot more UFO researchers. You've mm. got MUFON uh, as an organisation which uh, documents sightings and investigates um, mm. close encounters, so sightings and close encounter events from around the world, uh, and they document this. Um, so, so that's one thing. So, so acknowledging that the fact that these things exist, yeah, absolutely. You know, airline pilots, for example. You know, I've I've listened to footage of airline pilots, as you could say. Uh, you know, control. Is there a is there an aircraft that? Are, are you showing anything on your radar? There's an aircraft showing it at, at, you know, it's about three hundred yards away from my plane at my one o'clock. Is there anything showing it on your radar mm. at, at that altitude? No. Okay, well we can clearly see that there's something there. And then, then you can see, you hear all the footage of. Well, do you want to report that? Mm. Do you want to officially report that? You had the, in fact, you had the head of 
the Belgian Air Force, I'm pretty sure I've got this right, the head of the Belgian Air Force, that admitted that these things exist mm. because they've been playing havoc with a lot of the aircraft, the NATO aircraft, you know, in, in, in uh, European airspace for decades. Mm. Um, you, so, but but then, then it sort of begs the question, okay, what are they? Mm. Um, and if you... If you take a look at and you read up about all of the um, sightings and the things that people say, it's obvious what they're doing. These craft are observing. Yeah. Do you think they're manned, or do you reckon? You know, nowadays, obviously, we 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 kind of learned drone. We have our own kind of unmanned yeah. aircraft. I think for me, like you know, there must be an element of something because. Otherwise, filmmakers wouldn't have designed, you know, alien ships to look like they do. Art uh, uh, yes. always follows some sort of real reality. Um, and while I'm, I don't believe in this whole, like, it's there, it hovered, it stole me, and then it probed me, and I came back, and now I'm a cow type thing. That I find really <laughs> far-fetched. But the, the, the sightings from, like, airline pilots and stuff, and that, you know... The, the flybys, as I like to call I'd, I'd say, that 100% is like, there is something that, that takes a little bit of a more unknown, unknown, unknown feel for, for, for myself. Well, I'll, I'll challenge you to look up, to do a bit more reading on people. So, so a lot of people that, that claim to have had a close encounter... And I always forget which one it is. There's there's a third kind, there's a fourth kind. <clears throat> there's one where you actually encounter aliens, there's one where you get abducted by aliens. So they fit into these different categories. So that there are lots of there, there are lots of people who claim this because you know, look, it's a deep rooted mental thing. Mm. There's something in their life, there's a void that's missing, there's something that they want to believe in a higher purpose or whatever it is. Mm-hmm, so a lot mm-hmm. of it you have to sort through all, a lot of that. Um, but there are people. If you read in, if you, I would like you to have a, to to read into this, because I was in the same headspace as you. But the whole thing about observing. So, in answer to your question, let's start. Let's start with that. I would say that you've got manned, manned in inverted mm. commas, but uh, and unmanned, definitely, um, and they are observing humans as well. So, you've got people that have gone to see a psychiatrist for example um and gone for hypnotherapy sessions because they're thinking i can't sleep at night i'm having odd dreams mm. that i can't explain mm. they're relaying the most incredible stories whilst under hypnosis <clears throat> so they're not doing this through their conscious this is their subconscious talking which they can't control mm. um and then some people have actually had follow-up appointments for example with doctors to have an x-ray and found like little what look like microchips or or little vials mm. or metal objects you know it could be one behind the ear or one in the wrist or something they didn't even know was there and and had them removed and tested and they can't even tell what metal it is right mm. so did there's something there's something going on and we are being observed now <clears throat> my theory from all of the stuff that I've read is, um, and, and stuff that I've, I've seen and watched as well, my theory is that you've got either something from a parallel universe mm. or if you think of, if you just take the theory of relativity and you take the the laws of quantum physics and, and just based on what we know today that's based on what we know so it's not even about the unknown unknown so we you know, forget the stuff that we don't know based on what we know we know that gravity for example if it's utilized in the right way can bend space and time yes can it can fold space and time so if you can fold time then what's to say you can't go back in time, for example, yeah. or, or forward or forward or whatever. And, and, and actually 
I think the older I get, the more I, I I'm starting to to form the theory that we are being observed because because what's happening here is almost like some kind of some weird experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does certainly flipping feels like it. Yeah, it feels moment, like it, it, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. It really yeah. does. And I think what I love I mean, so I I'm I'm uh, we're going to probably end up doing a whole spiritual thing at some point on our podcast. So I won't go too deep, but I am a very science-based person, which is why I the the whole space time thing, you know, which I I've, I've read into as well. I I agree. That, you know, there are bits of physics that that make sense and point to the, in this direction, we don't necessarily understand it yet. Um, and that's why I sort of said, like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm more dubious about perhaps the things where it's like, you know, the ones that come screaming, like, I'm back as a cow type thing, that, 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 that something that yeah. they go away yeah. and they're related to, you know, it's then human related when they return about what happened. Yeah. Um, I, I have this kind of like, you know it's it's just, i don't i don't believe in the stereotypical but i do believe in the the something um and the whole like i think the parallel universe bit i think later on we'll we'll grow into a really depth into like our, our, my theory on this um i think it's really probably the most significant bit in terms of that especially when you sort of then compare that to what we we're going to perceive as the metaverse and how that's going to then interlink with Ooh, who we okay. are as function. So you, uh, yeah. I hope you know the point in question. So you probably know the one that I'm probably referring to. Yeah, I do. So. I do. But yeah, I mean, yes, I think is the answer to our to the point in question. Do we believe in UFOs? I'll, I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this on this point. And again, this is look. It's a subject I'd love to come back to. I, I honestly don't think we're going to make it through all the point in questions. <laughs> um, but. but, but you know, even if we do, I think there's a lot that we're going to need to come back to. But I'll, I'll leave you with this just for the time being and also for our listeners. Um, go onto YouTube and type in Joe Rogan and Bob Lazar. And Bob Lazar is, um, he was, he's got the most incredible story. I read his book, actually. I read it years ago. And it's absolutely fascinating how he was recruited and he ended up going to a research facility in the middle of the Nevada desert mm. to basically study an unidentified object flying object that was was in a <clears throat> it was in a hangar mm. and everyone's kind of given very limited information and and asked yeah so he was told specifically he was asked specifically to look at the propulsion system of this but he wasn't allowed to know anything else about it mm. so, so they'd have different people that were given very specific remits to look at the same object but weren't allowed to talk to one another mm. weren't allowed to talk about what they've been briefed on they just had to find answers for that one particular thing that they were asked to look into and when he'd and by the way he's been telling his story now for over 30 years yeah i know he's been doing it for a long time yeah and it hasn't changed <laughs> yeah at all yeah yeah no it hasn't changed and he, he he did an interview with joe rogan i can't remember if it was last year or the year before uh, i'm not sure but yeah, look just worth ago. just mm. worth watching that it for anybody that thinks oh come on you know just watch that as a starting point and go from there and see what you think after after that because as he says you know what what's he got to gain from this talking about this and being in the spotlight with regards to this has been an has been the bane of his life for 30 years yes and he's had real nut jobs you know right to him and he gets unwanted publicity and press and he and he hates it and you you can see it in his face as he's you know he's kind of He's saying all of this reluctantly, but he's doing it because he thinks, "Look, I've got, it's, it's, I've got to tell people." Mm, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> we can go on to like poignant question number two. So you know, <laughs> the the a the whole alien subsection of this, like, to do to believe in aliens is kind of what I've written down here. Um, and you know, based upon that quote that you've kind of said from, um, from there. You know, for me, 
yes i mean absolutely there's got to be something out there that is alien to us you know there's got to be something that is not who we are um and what we refer to um i I totally believe that you know if there was something that was how to call it uh alien to us that arrived on this planet it would not be a good thing i do not think i do not think it would be a good thing I'd agree with that because why would they go out in their way to come here? Yeah. You, you look at the the current direction that that we've gone on, and I, I don't I don't want to jump into it too early, but may have to in a minute. But the the way that the the, the human population appears to be going along, and and absolutely, I hundred percent know that I'm a contributor to this. You know, it's it's in my nature, but I'll I'll explain into that with the air quotes in a minute. Um, that what would something else gain from us that we don't already have and I think you know there'll be people that'll be sat there especially in higher powers that would be going don't be ridiculous like they've got loads to gain from us and I think that's that's actually the human race's biggest weakness is often our arrogance in our own importance whether that's as a race solo or as a group I think that's one of the things that that definitely not separates us but puts it as a disadvantage i agree because we've got nothing else to measure ourselves against we kind of think that we are the pinnacle of Mm. evolution based on what we know yeah and i mean so i mean the question for you i suppose is yes do you want to go into your aliens bit and what you think I don't think I've got much to say on that because if you'd asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have said, yeah, definitely. And and I, I suppose maybe in, in if, if you take a look at the size of the universe and the number of galaxies, I mean, billions of galaxies, for goodness sake. So the law of averages is going to say, yeah, there's mm. going to be some intelligent life somewhere else. But so on that basis, I say yes. If you want to link it to to aliens in UFOs visiting Earth, I I think the probability of that is is something. In, it's a very low order of magnitude. Yes. I think there's probably something. That's an easy theory to hang your hat off. I don't think it's that. Yeah. I don't think somebody's gone. I don't think some creature or some alien life or anything out there in the galaxy is thinking, "Yeah, I'm going to travel literally hundreds of thousands of light years." Mm. To Which go is to why Earth. I think, in question one, UFOs generally are unma- unmanned. I I would agree with that because also if you had, well, it depends on what type of beings you've got. If again, if you take carbon and carbon-based life forms the kind so life forms similar to us and creatures mm. you know, mammals and that we've got on earth Stupid. would not be able to would not be able to to withstand that that kind of those kind of g-forces or things that that, that those ufos are capable of doing mm. unless they're a higher order of base life uh, form. Yeah. yeah so they could be now you ask me to do like the element, the periodic table off the top of my head. Uh, that's not yeah. happening at yeah, twenty I to eleven know. at night. On yeah, a I know. <laughs> yeah, no silicon. No, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say something, something different, like silicon, for example. Yeah, that's normally the one that they use. Yeah, silicon based. Okay, so there, there could be something. I don't know, but yeah, the law of averages say that they exist. For me, if they arrived, we'd be scuppered. Um. But I also don't know why they would want to arrive. Yes, exactly. So here, here's an interesting point. So if you think about the stories that people have said, so you sp- there are some people that have come forth from working in government departments, which are just above top secret, and they've said they've communicated with these alien, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this in air quotes, alien beings. Mm-hmm. 
the fact that you've got these beings so let's say they, they exist the fact that this could be a humankind from you know to, um 10 generations in the future or 100 generations in the future trying to come back to observe and to warn us or to to kind of guide us in the right direction or i don't know no, you idiot <laughs> yeah so I, I i mean i don't know but that that's more feasible because you yeah. think they've got a vested interest yes <laughs> right yeah yeah Whereas... now you're gonna go on that time loop thing like i visited my father type thing or um a back to the future type thing i am my own father yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. I mean, as as implausible as that might sound, but it would explain. Um, it would explain a lot more than some random creature from another planet that would be thinking, "Well, yeah, to look at us like we could, you know, the way that we look at ants." <laughs> I don't, I don't go out of my way to try and talk to an ant or communicate to an ant or build up a relationship with an ant. I'll observe an ant. There are people that observe an ant and then they step on the ant. Mm. There are kids that look at ants and try and burn them with a magnifying glass because for them it's just like, well, it's just an ant. And so for a creature, you know, so to go out of your way to try and engage at that level, at that Must depth, be a purpose. there's got to be a purpose. So I think there is, I think there is a humankind link. Okay, interesting. I've not thought of it that way. I really, I like that. I like that, and I think it supports. Does it support? I mean, there's there's a whole different element. I think around, you know, my belief in how. Yeah, I mean that that kind of arrogance, that uh, thought process around things like AI as well as a whole kind of thing that I just. The the thing I always come back to. The brain is a wonder. The, the, the human brain is a wonderful thing until you realise it named itself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. And there are stuff that I don't think that we will ever be able to comprehend. It's just not Agree. feasibly possible for us to yeah, comprehend. Agree. You know, um, uh, a dog cannot have a thought about its own thoughts. We are the only carbon-based life form that can do that we can have a thought about a thought we can go oh that was an interesting thought or you know and and it means that you know we will have those thoughts and we all have them where you're stood i don't know at the edge of a on the on on the side of a bridge and your mind just goes jump off and you think where the heck did that come from yeah but you you all have them or you're holding a baby and you've like throw out the window you know your body you know it's those kinds of irrational thoughts that 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 come in from a from that perspective and the the importance of an alien now bearing in mind that the definition for alien is foreign means that you'll end up with a you've got to end up with this like kind of you know understanding like what is foreign so when you say there's a humankind link and this and it's a you know this time travel paradox it still would be an alien to me and that's why i think it's really important to kind of go okay I'll, we might not ever understand that but if it's something in the future that we could understand and we're not at the evolution section evolution part to understand it I, i'm going off on a bit of a tangent but it's kind of like there's still something i think that's so alien that we cannot comprehend yes yeah so it could it could be humankind evolved to such an extent that we we barely recognize it anymore mm. we barely recognize our species anymore so that it's, it's as good as a, being an alien yes because we don't recognize yeah yeah no I, that, 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 that's that, it yeah that's it and then question three so i've deliberately put this question in I think more just to kind of <laughs> expose myself <laughs> and one of my fears. But the question is, are fish aliens or aliens fish? Chicken and an egg scenario. So this is on the extreme end. We take out the humanoid bit that we've just discussed. This yeah. is perhaps more around the, like, the your, your stereotypical TV alien. Do you believe that fish are aliens? No. Okay, interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Deep down, like not even in the, like the Marina Trench where we've not we've never been. Yeah, no, because yeah, I I I know where you're going with this, mm. but yeah, I I don't believe. No, oh, okay. Because I think that the in some aspects the ocean is scarier than space. It's definitely less explored. Mm. We kn- we know less about it. Yeah. Than we do space. Le- less than we should definitely, considering definitely that we cover seventy percent of our planet, and we've been, yeah. and you know we've not been to the depths or mapped all the depths out and figured out what you know what things are and and it's it you know they're on a level playing field in terms of they're both really interesting but i would say that like the reason why the ocean seems scarier to me because it feels closer if we discovered something in the ocean that was like (laughs) oh crap like we would like to me that's like a oh man but if we discovered something that was like 14 light year galaxies away i'd be like well okay i feel like a little bit or you know kind of you know we could chill about that one a little bit but it's all that whole like almost like godzilla type thing like suddenly the aliens appear out from the <laughs> ocean type thing and you're like not comfortable with that one not comfortable at all yeah suddenly you're not going to be doing your morning swims on this <laughs> beach no Ooh. yeah i i think um th- this is it's an interesting point there is a whole area of ufo theory and phenomenon based on sightings of craft in the sea that have come out of the sea craft that are below sea level in the arctic Mm. things coming out of the holes in the arctic ice so that's a whole different that's a whole different yeah (laughs) pardon the pun (laughs) But it's true. So when you start talking about the origins as well of of these craft and this this phenomenon, where actually it could be on our doorstep, for Mm. all we know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what frightens me more about, like, this ocean aspect. And I mean, mean, have you seen some of the fish that are, like, in the depths of the ocean? They're They're pretty weird. weird. And I'm a bit like, yeah, um, that, that, you know, a humanoid alien coming from space to come and visit, I'd be like, well, okay, are you humanoid? <laughs> Maybe, sort of thing. But, you know, fucking one of the st- angle, angular fish <laughs> from like deep down suddenly realizing, oh, I'm going to decide to walk. I, I would, I'm going to, you know, no, thank you. That's, that's not something I want to see. <laughs> Thanks. It, it is. It's incredible that you've got these things that can survive as well. Mm. In waters so cold at such high pressure. Yeah, the pressure's a bit that gets me. Yeah. And you think, how how do you live? Yeah. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. And and more so that I, because I saw a video this week of uh, of a scoo, uh, well, this diver, at, he was 271 meters below sea devil sea level sea devil blimey it's like <laughs> whoa a, is that a freudian slip that or? is a freudian slip this is your this is your subconscious fear starting yeah, to no. um, bubble up I, I i'm not normally i'm not i'm not so afraid of the ocean that i won't go in it but i'm it's i prefer to be swimming in a swimming pool than the, than the sea and a nice infinity pool mm, yeah maybe <laughs> okay <laughs> um i love the beach uh but my yeah like as i said like uh, oh and the video that i watched he was at uh, you know 271 meters below sea level and got attacked by a swordfish and you just see this this like thing and just the swordfish is on i'm like yeah no yeah that, <laughs> absolutely not no well you wouldn't catch me in the sea anyway um i've got a fear of deep water for a start so lassophobia is think, that what it's called i think it's called that i'm pretty sure I should know it. Bear in mind, I've got a fear of it. Fear of deep water. <clears throat> oh, th- th- thalassophobia. T-H-A. Thalass- thalassophobia. Okay. Thalassophobia. 
is a type of specific pho phobia that involves a persistent intense fear of deep bodies of water such as the ocean or sea that'll be the one yeah and then mega low hydro uh could probably ironically be called the fear of the uh, fear of long words um is fear <laughs> of large underwater creatures or objects mega oh. mega low hydro um and that's probably a bit more my one that i would have oh, i've got both <laughs> It's one of those things. If a bit of seaweed like scrapes my leg while I'm in the sea, oh. I say I'm out. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So what's the point of going in the sea? Because something like that is bound to happen, and yeah. you're going to think the worst. It's interesting. I when I went to Jamaica, I didn't. I avoided going in the sea because the the bottom of the of the water. Even though you got in and it was hotter than most jacuzzis that I've ever been in. Because it was like thirty-five to forty degrees in Jamaica, fucking lush. Um, <laughs> God, I need to be there. Um, the issue was is that all of it was like covered in like sort of maybe sort of I don't know two inches depth of just like reeds, which L felt really squirmy, but hidden in them, and called I think they're called urchins. But the only way I can describe them is they're little like black balls that had like six inch spikes all around them. They're literally just a <laughs> spike ball. And and one of the other one of the other people that I went with stood on one. That's it. Got to pull them all out like step by step. And I'm like, no, I haven't got time for that. Too much flim flam. Yeah, too much. Fl exactly. Too much flim flam. <laughs> just not. Nautical but... flim flam. And then foot all swelled up because it's full of like you know. oh, yeah because it's got toxins and stuff yeah in it, isn't toxins because it? so it's, it's protection mechanism isn't it venomous poisonous yeah both there is a word there is a rule is i think if it's venomous it means that if it bites you you die it's poisonous if you bite it you die oh okay yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah <laughs> and then and then the phrase goes um it's like uh if it's venomous and it bites you you die um it's poisonous you bite it it dies and then the, the person goes what happens if it bites you and it dies well that means you, you're poisonous what happens if you bite each other and neither of you dies it's kinky <laughs> <laughs> yeah now we're entering into kind of what politicians do in their spare time <laughs> Kind of territory. I can already <laughs> hear my mum rolling her eyes <laughs> already. <laughs> it's true though. Hashtag just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Hashtag kinky. Question four. Do you believe in haunted houses? 100%. So how how far do you want to take this? I've got time. In terms of So does that we haven't got the specific question which is do you believe in ghosts? Oh, so I kind of hinted oh, at So yeah, so if you're wrapping all of that up. Yeah, kind of. And we can go into more depth in another podcast because <coughs> I'm I suppose I specifically I specifically chose haunted houses in terms of like pranks and things like that. Um, but for more for the theme but i think that because i think there's a different level of of ghosts as well at some point so um but this was the question i thought that you would probably go quite in depth into yeah i don't, I don't know i don't know whether we go into it into in this podcast and we have a separate sesh mm. on what i can go into because it's not linked to a house that's haunted but it is linked to pa paranormal activity ghosts yeah. for want of a better term yeah i i would say well i so, mean we can brush uh, the surface uh, of it i mean for me because i'm happy to kind of do this so i'm a lot more skeptical 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 that word susceptible skeptical skeptical 
about ghosts than I am about aliens, I think. Because Ooh, okay. <clears throat> but ish ish because of what I believe on question 10. Okay, so so this goes back to the do you believe in UFOs and do you believe in aliens? The two are separate things. Yeah. So so I get it and I get why you're linking that to question 10. Yeah, so uh, right. So yeah. okay, so yeah, I totally get that. So I have had countless experiences with regards to ghosts in my life why i don't know um, hey friend <laughs> yeah it's it, it something apparently something to do with and i've read a lot about this as well something to do with um how you how open you are in your th thinking to to things but also how easily you can go into a meditative state um there's a whole bunch of stuff mm. it kind of makes you more of um uh, the other word, I can't uh say. like a lightning rod <laughs> well like a lightning rod to mm. susceptible yeah so susceptible is or open to, to to these things so um I I I I think we should definitely do because I've got I've got specific stuff I could um yeah it'd be amazing to 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 relay this because it is incredible stuff that's mm. happened to me if we if we just focus on the houses so I've got two two short stories on on this I went to um a friend of mine who who bless him he he died a number of years ago um when we were sort of late teens i went to his house well he was living with his dad well, his parents are separated he used to spend a lot of time with his mum but at the weekends he'd go and stay with his dad and and they were both local and i went over one weekend and uh you know we were kind of having like video games and watching videos and that kind of session and, and I, was, I stayed the night and i remember going to the upstairs toilet and whilst I was doing my business, um, it suddenly got very cold. And it literally felt like somebody was standing behind me. Mm. And I kept kind of looking back and thinking, oh, that's a bit odd. Actually, this is really odd. And then I went, I finished, went to go and wash my hands and it felt like that person was had followed me into the sink. Mm. at which point I washed I washed my hands very quickly very very quickly and then went downstairs and, and I didn't say anything for ages and we actually ended up having a bit to drink and later on in the evening I said to him listen it's a bit of a long shot here and I, I'm going to probably sound like a real idiot saying this but is is there is there a presence in this house? And he, he just looked at me and it's like, Oh, okay. Uh, yes, there is. He said, what happened? So I told him and he said, yeah, that's, that's a common thing in that, that part of the house. It's like, Oh, okay. Could it odd. happen at a different time when I'm not having a whiz, please. <laughs> yeah. It was just, yeah, it was really odd, but I, I you know, there, there, there was, there's definitely something there. Why you? Know, why would you? You know, you just go to Lee. You go to Lee. You don't. You're not in a frame of mind where you're thinking, "Oh, I'll go to Lou. I wonder if there's going to be a ghost there." You, mm, yes. you don't think like that. You just go to Lou. Um, and I think that's probably why I'm more skeptical. Skeptical about like, I can't say that word. But <laughs> why I'm more like, of houses that specifically advertise that they are haunted. I think going to hunt for it, you'll never you'll never find it. Me yeah, I don't know. I don't mm. know if I've got an opinion on that. Mm. But you've got you have got situations where grounds the grounds that the house has been built on, things have happened there. 
so so where where we used to live where my wife and daughter and I used to live um our house was in a it was like in a little little estate behind which there was quite a large woodland area mm-hmm. that I found out um a few years after we moved in it's called cutthroat wood it's pleasant yeah nice I was thinking cut this is a bit of an odd People would just refer to it very casually. Oh, yeah, that's, you know, that's that area. That's cutthroat wood. Cutthroat wood. So anyway, I looked into it. Um, and it was on the A40. And it was a section of the main road from Oxford to, into London. Yes. And you used to get a lot of highwaymen that used to hide in those, in that, that little cluster of trees, in mm-hmm. that little wooded area. And they used to come out and they used to hijack. They used to kill people and take their belongings and take whatever, you know, they were talking like 16th century. Yes, yeah. You know, 15th, 16th, 17th century. That's what they used to do. And they used to, they used to drag the, the, the victims into the into the woods. They used to kill them. They used to cut their throats and leave them there. And the hidden, no one would find them. And they used to take their horse and cart and their belongings. And, it's, and it it was such a, f- uh, um, because of the way it was situated and because it was up a hill and and it it was obviously a good place to do it and and it, it, the name stuck for goodness mm. sake people give a name for a reason it's cutthroat wood, um, and I and we had situations for example in 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 my house, um, I remember my my wife, my daughter was very young at the time and she she took my daughter up to to you know get her to sleep she then came back down we watched a bit of tv then she said right i'm off to sleep and i just it was just one of those evenings where i thought i don't want to go up yet i'm not i still Mm. need a bit more of that unwinding time Mm. um and the playroom was just off the living room where the tv was so i'm sitting in the living room watching tv in the playrooms like a little separate area it's directly in front of me but it's through these 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 double doors and uh um, Rachel had this it's like a dance mat so you stand on it and it and, and, and depending on where you step on it it would play a different note mm. and she wore this damn thing out so the batteries ran out ages and ages ago I never replaced them um, and I'm talking about you know the batteries ran out for, so at that point and that evening the batteries, I would say, were probably they'd run out maybe three years prior. <laughs> three years, yeah, seriously, three yeah. or four years. I'd never change it because it used to drive me nuts. The mm. thing would drive me nuts, and she did. She didn't really use it much anyway, so it was kind of in the corner of the room. And uh, yeah, lo and behold, this thing just kicked off. <laughs> mm. Um. And, and I was I was that taken aback that I was just like, what? And I just remember just. Oh, it's giving me. I, I, I'm yeah, actually geez. getting goosebumps. Yeah, just think, just recalling it. But I remember very gingerly walking up to the double doors and just opening them up and just stepping back and looking into the dark play area and seeing the lights on this thing and the notes being. Put, oh, this is God, Don. Whoa, mm-hmm. my. Uh, yeah, I'm getting goosebumps, and, and and I could I could see the notes. I could see this thing lit up. And I knew there was something there. There's nothing on there. Hmm. I knew there was something there because I could feel the presence of something, which is something, another thing is very, very difficult to explain. Yes. But I could feel the presence of something there. And I I don't know. You don't know what to do in a situation. What do you do in a situation like that? And so I kind of just said something stupid like, "Uh, hello. (laughs) And, And it stopped. And then I sort of said something else stupid, like, is anybody there? Because I didn't know what else to say. What do yeah. you say in a situation it's like that, funny, right? It, it is stupid. Because you always, but... I, I, it was, it's funny because my instant thought when you said, oh, I went and opened the, the doors was, oh, you'd be the first to die in a horror movie. <laughs> I would be. But, but you know what? It's. But you can understand what, you when, when it happens to you, you can understand why that's actually the default reaction of somebody. It is a default reaction, yes, because because what am I going to do? I hear it go off, 
Mm. Your rational brain doesn't kick in straight away and go, well, th- there was no, you know, the batteries and that thing were dead. They needed changing like years ago. It hasn't worked for years. There's something going on. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to run. Run to where? Yeah. What are you going to do? You, you, you're that, when it happens to you in real life, you're a bit like, you haven't got all the scary uh, music and stuff in the background. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. You know, in video the editing. Tension it, building, the tension yeah, there's building. no tension in the air right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's you, you, <laughs> you can just, cut it with a cricket stump. You can cut it with a cricket stump. You you you're curious. You're like, what the hell is going on? So that's what I did. So I gingerly sort of made my way in to find out what was because I needed the answer to figure out what was going on. Mm. For me it was more compelling. It sort of overtook the fear. You're- your subconscious is going in and trying. So, I mean, I can you can attune that to um, panic attacks. So, uh, bear with me; it, it, it makes sense. Uh, and it, it's it explain your rational bra- why you why you want to go and figure out what it is. Um, so, if you're driving in the car and somebody cuts you off, you go, "Oh my god!" The heart rate goes up and your palms are all sweaty and everything like that, and then you know. And then you go, and then your mind goes, oh, somebody cut me off. So stops releasing cortisol and stops releasing the stress adrenaline um, hormone, and you calm back down. The way that panic attacks work, bear with me with this, this link will work, is that happens, but then you've got nothing. So your body goes, well, where's the thing that's wrong? Where's the thing that's wrong? Where's the thing that's wrong? And that's how you get panic attacks, because you get worse and worse because your body can't figure out what was the thing that got wrong you know it's like last time this happened the guy cut us off on the on on the road so i know what it was so i can calm back down but now it's just going full flight of fight response and i have a you know the 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 way that the brain works is it does that regardless so what what happened you know for me it's it's your brain has gone oh that's weird i need to figure that out because I can't rationalize that. So it makes you do dumb things because it goes, can you go figure that out for me, please? That's exactly it. Yeah, I wanted an explanation. And that desire to have an explanation for what happened did, was was stronger than my, my fear at the time. Mm. Mm. Which was, what the hell is going on? So it was a very calm, controlled fear. Mm-hmm. Sort of overtaken by curiosity. Mm. Weird. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I I think we could do we could do a whole podcast on. Oh, honestly, you, you wait. <laughs> that's nothing. Oh, really? I yeah, honestly, I I kid you not. That's nothing. What I've just told you, those are two mild things that have happened to me. If if you, I'd put those into the category of if they were a Nando's sauce, that they, they would be mild. <laughs> I've got medium and I've got hot. <laughs> Oh, interesting. I don't know whether I'm jealous or not. Like, because I'm, you know, I'm very open and honest. I'm a massive coward. Absolutely. 100%. It's funny, you know, considering I've done Taekwondo for uh, be 17 years this year. Like, I always have the stupid people that be like, oh, go on, you could beat that person. You could beat that person. Probably not. Like, Street Fight is something completely different. You know, and and honestly, all my training basically says you want to avoid the fight. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and good good martial arts th- yeah. teach that, don't they? So yeah, yeah, and I I teach that when I when I do self defense with people. I said honestly, the best best thing you can do is just avoid it. I haven't got any time for flim flam, as I said. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm I'm scared of quite a lot of things, um, I'm, and I'm happy to admit most of them. You know, I'm. I'm not I'm not massively claustrophobic but I'm uncomfortable with small spaces because I don't like the idea of being trapped um I'm not I can't do heights heights I just can't do uh, d- but that's more I get vertigo from those but it's, you know things for me like I'm terrified of horses and large animals um which are are your 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 esteemed quiz <laughs> quiz <laughs> person loves <laughs> loves <clears throat> which I can't but but can't stand. So when it comes to like these paranormal activities I have never experienced anything. I think because for one of for for the single reason that for me if that happened to me I'd be like nope, I'm going upstairs. 
I, I don't like I, my the fear for me would be stronger than my will to, to go and I find think out. So. I think so. Because I'm not brave. But I don't think I don't think that's because it doesn't exist. I'm not. I'm not. I, I think there's definitely something there. I just think I'm. I'm almost gutted that I don't. Not that I don't have an opinion on it, but I don't. I can't have an experience to relay because I just think that my fear brain just goes fuck, fuck that I'm out. <laughs> yeah, but wait one second. So, what, does that mean you've never acknowledged an experience, or you haven't had an experience? There's uh, a difference. Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question. I mean, for me, like the experience that I would have had for in the second example would have been something made a noise. And I'd be like, I don't know what that is. And I don't, I just wouldn't have investigated. I would have just gone, clearly something's telling me to go to bed. And I would have just been like, you know, sod that I'm out. So I wouldn't have gone into the room and felt the presence ah. and stuff that you've mentioned. So I would have been like. I, so, so I could, so to be clear, I couldn't step into that room. But you went and opened I opened doors. the doors and I yeah. was looking in and it was dark. I'd have to. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Ah, oh, I'm actually getting chills. So, I would have had to have stepped in, ar- gone around one of the doors to switch the lights on. Uh huh. Yeah. Because it was all... to the left hand side, and there's no way that. So, so I would have had to have gone in a meter into the room to then put mm. my hand around to switch the lights on. Uh, but there was no way I was, st- I was crossing that. I was standing on the threshold. There was no way I was going into that room. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have even, wouldn't have even opened the doors. My fear would have been more because that's just the way that my mind works. That's why when when it comes to like horror films and things like that, which we might meant well, number six, um, <laughs> I'm one of those people that's like, why would you just don't go and investigate? It's clearly obvious, you dumb idiot. What are you doing? And and that's just the way. The one, the bathroom one, that might have been different, but I've never, I've never experienced anything like that at all. Okay. So, uh, I think we're gonna have a whole podcast on this. Yeah, honestly, Tom, I can't. I don't want to start on it now because th- these other stories are just they will, they will blow your mind. I, I'm just <laughs> thinking about them now. Yeah, Chloe, Chloe's. Chloe's been my witness on two of them. Mm-hmm. My cousin's been a witness on one of them. In fact, another cousin of mine's been a witness on th- for two other occasions, and uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, which is probably the creepiest one of all. This is like setting a good. She, yeah, yeah, good, it, good tea up for like. So, I mean, we've got podcasts planned until September, so. The one yeah. for October, the Halloween one. We might. Oh, a Halloween all... special, yeah, possibly. We'll have to do a Halloween special, won't we? The the one with my ex when we were in the university, I was in her room. Yeah, that was pro- that was proper. That creeped me out to the point where I was like, okay, I'm out. Bye. Because, <laughs> well, she. <laughs> Without giving too much away, and again, I'm not going to go into it. She had to explain to me what happened because I couldn't recall what happened. Okay. And she was absolutely terrified. Had to explain it to me, and then I had to drive home. Well, I stayed with. I stayed with her. This is the crazy thing. I stayed with her because I was saying, "Look, I just want to give you some reassurance that everything's okay." And she said, "I can't explain what happened there." Mm. And I, I, yeah, and I said, well, look, maybe I should just go home. And she said, yeah, that's just good idea. Let's talk about this tomorrow. And I got in the car and thinking, what, what the hell? Yeah, was weird. that all about? Yeah, it's odd. Weird. weird. We'll do a, we'll do a full. A f- so for the folks listening, we'll do a full podcast and go into depth into Jerry's fantastical stories that. It could be almost like we might have to put like a a disclaimer. This is not going to be a dis- a jovial podcast. <laughs> yeah, definitely not jovial. Flipping egg. Yeah, weird stuff. Distinct, definitely. Distinct, definitely. One of them. One one of the experiences. In fact, 
uh, no, pro- I would say probably about two or three of the experiences that I had. Kind, I I would say if if, if somebody was to t- tell me that it's directly linked to to the point in question number ten, I'd say yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Mm. Probably kind of linked to what we talked about with parallel universes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's but, do like okay. we've got like a few that are a little bit more lighthearted, so we can get maybe <laughs> some joviality back into it. Yeah. Pod- I, I like it. I like the fact that we talk about different things, and this is yeah. gonna, this is a different podcast again. Um, yeah. So that's good. Um, question five: April Fools and playing practical jokes. Just phone up a pizza company and ask <laughs> them if they do liver, and then just go through that loop about. 15 times until they hang up or uh, however many times see how long you can go through that loop before they hang up on you do you deliver do you deliver yes excellent and have one of them please <laughs> what would you want yes sir what would you like would you deliver <laughs> that's amazing yes we do Excellent, yeah. I'm not sure you'd want a liver pi- a liver. <laughs> liver pizza. No, you wouldn't. Pizza. That would be horrible. <laughs> It'd be disgusting. But that's, that's about awful. the extent of my <laughs> That's about the extent of my practical jokes. That's <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't really back when there was a landline that had a cord on it that you had to see Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't use the phone Those on the, the internet. Damn it. I used to pick up the phone and start dialing, and then somebody at the other end would go, "I'm on the phone." Yeah. <laughs> As you're going. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, for me, like April Fool's jokes, I don't like the ones that um, that r- could ruin people's lives, announcing somebody's pregnant and then saying they're not, things like that. I like the innocence ones, anything that's non-life threatening, um, or or for example, with my new car that I got yesterday. Um, where I can activate the horn and the lights from my phone. Somebody with a weak constitution. <laughs> Somebody with a weak heart. That could that could push them over the edge. Oh, it's one of my favourite things to do. One of my favourite things to do is when somebody is un- not suspecting it and they're walking to get in your car, it's just giving the horn a quick blast. <laughs> that is one of my one of my favourite things to do. <laughs> or, um. And I used to get my best mate with this all the time. Um, they're stood on, you know, they've stood with the door like half open. So they're like stood on the ground with the, and they're between the door talking to somebody. And then you do, you just clean your windscreen. <laughs> they stood there so they get absolutely soaked. <laughs> 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 that, genius every time. And it's, That's and good. Yeah, I like it's that. It's funny every time. There And it's there's no harm done because it's just a bit of, you know, water and cleaning fluid. and detergent which is yeah. corrosive and it's got <laughs> loads of signs on it on the windscreen wash saying <laughs> if you get this in your eyes immediately go and consult your doctor and it Stop. gets in their eyes and they go oh it's burning this is really burning and you go ah, but look i got you yeah and no say, any, any anything like that the horn dom it's not funny my eyes are burning <laughs> take me to a hospital <laughs> no oh dear those are the types of jokes that I like. I absolutely love them. And Dom, I'm um, losing vision of my right eye. I mean... Sorry. <laughs> I mean, even the joke that... that um, or Laura, who was on the podcast, did with one of my other friends over where they, you know, I'm come walking around... The, well, I'm in the room, and then they get confetti cannons out and go... Pow! That's great. Love that. Not impressed that I'm still finding confetti in things because they then shoved confetti in everything, all my pockets, like my coat. Oh no! Uh, yeah, that that means that I'm still finding confetti in stuff like three <laughs> months later. Uh, I did um, m- one of my favourite ones for somebody's birthday. Um, I just poured a load of glitter into the card and then. Oh damn and it! She went like like that, and it went everywhere. Oh, uh, do you know that glitter it gets in your eyes? <laughs> you shower years later. You shower and you go, oh, a bit of glitter just came out from somewhere. I don't know where that was. <laughs> you just get glitter everywhere. It just it's in your life forever. Yeah, yeah. I've done a few glitter, and I tried to get Laura for her for her thirtieth, but um, 
uh, and I used a professional company to send the thing, um, but alas, it, uh, it apparently she heard it, so she opened it over a bowl, so it didn't matter. Like, <laughs> Freaking damn it! Like, you got one purpose in life, <laughs> but yes, glit, glit, glitter in a, a card—that's always good. Um, Have you ever got glitter in your eye? It's no yeah. joke. Yeah, it's like it's as bad as getting an eyelash in there. Yeah, but it's more difficult to remove than an eyelash. Absolutely. Um, have you seen? Um, I mean, speaking of space, almost earlier on, Mark, a guy called Mark Rober. He's an ex NASA engineer, and he's built uh, like uh, a box that, when you take it off, it like throws glitter everywhere. It's got phones recording um, and sounds like s- police sirens because it's um, it's from America. Obviously, they have a lot of porch pirates. Where people, oh, okay. Amazon will do that. People come and just take the items from that, whatever it is. And the idea being it's GPS tracked. And then when they take it off, it, it throws glitter everywhere and sprays fart spray. Um, and then <laughs> it does like stuff like that. There's a whole, like he does them every year. There's a whole like series of YouTube videos that he's done on them, um, which I just think is, is genius. But yeah, that, that absolutely is like my dream. My Mark Rober, dream. did you say? Mark Rober. R O B E. I'll have to look him up. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's h- hilarious. Um, and he also did a squirrel, like assault course, to see how intelligent squirrels are, basically. Uh, and and spoiler alert, they aren't that intelligent, but they did eventually manage to complete the assault course. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Crafty little buggers. Yeah, I know. I know. But yeah. I love love it. I, I I I like things like that. I think are the best. The best. In terms of practical jokes. <laughs> uh, question six: Scary movies. Can't stand them, really. Oh, thank God! I'm glad it's not just me. No, I'm I'm a chicken, complete and utter chicken with scary movies. So, don't talk to me about horror movies. There's no point asking me which horror movies I I just can't watch them. Mm. Oh, it really. I, I, I've never liked them, even as a child. No. Um, I never liked the thrill of it. It I, it disturbs me on such a deep level. It's it's so bearing in mind I'm somebody that loves, you know I like the pranks you know the you know making people jump with like pl- blaring a horn. I like the surprise jump scare. I don't even mind being jump scared if I don't know about it. But if I know about it. That tension, that's the bit I can't stand. That physically makes me feel sick. Yeah, that, it's that horrible, tension. isn't it? So like a, a thriller, especially, or, um, you know, or even if it's a jump scare movie, if I know that a jump scare is going to come along, it's the waiting. Once the jump scare's happened, I'm like, oh, okay, that was good. But it's that waiting that I cannot stand. Yeah. And video games are worse because you're in control. So you're trying to avoid it. Um, and yeah, it, I just can't stand that and also because horror movies also try and use gore and i'm very very squeamish so i i don't i don't do gore it's the gore it's the yeah i agree it's the gore it's the music as well so the whole atmospheric mm. around building that tension oh yeah i can't st- oh yeah don't that- like horror movies at all do not enjoy it at no. all. And, and and what makes it worse is when you watch something like The Exorcist and then you realise <laughs> it's actually based on a book and that book was based on a true story. Yes. And and then you and then you then kind you of think the now I, then you get proper get the heebie jeebies. You then kind of think shit, I wish I hadn't seen that because <laughs> I now can't unsee it. Yeah. So so I watched The Exorcist donkeys years ago. And I can't get that out of my head. Same as American Werewolf in London. And there's certain scenes in that that I just think, no, I can't. I, I just, I've tried desperately to unsee it and I can't. Mm. So, yeah. No. Yeah. No, I can't Can't stand horror movies no. at all. Oh. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> not. It's all right, my chair has just got caught in my green screen. I can't move, so I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> So fo- your folks can't your see green this. screen's uh, possessed. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> no, I saw it move. 
for the listeners that can't see, I, I'm sat at my desk and I've got my green screen about two laminate flooring pads away. So I've not got a lot of room. I can't normally move anyway. But sometimes it just depends upon where the wheels are on the, you know, on an office chair. You know, if the if the wheels are pointing like that, then I, uh, pointing so that, you know, directly oh, at the green saying. screen, it's slightly yeah. longer than if they're, you know, sort of, you know, 45 degrees on or whatever. Um, and it obviously just got stuck on the foot and I was just trying to shift one of my feet and I was like, Ugh, I'm <laughs> and I, the chair wouldn't move and I was stuck. So uh, <laughs> completely ruined that atmosphere, didn't I? <laughs> no, listen, whilst we were talking, I've just seen this green screen somehow make its way closer to you. <laughs> when we first started speaking, it was about four meters away. <laughs> no, it's behind you, Dom. Yeah. Run, <laughs> run. <laughs> And you may be wondering, for listeners, why I have the green screen up. It's purely for a little bit of noise dampening because my room is uh, is quite large. So, alas. <laughs> have you ever projected a green screen onto your green screen? Yes. I haven't got the filter on. I have not got the filter on. Uh, you know, I can, I can, I can. You know, just have to do that. Doink. There you go. It's not green that's anymore. That's pretty cool. It's changed that's to black. really cool. Yeah. And it's the same uh, It's the same as what I have for my... Um, oh, I haven't got my lights very bright. I can get that to be a bit more. There you go. That's that's when Whoa. you get like a proper kind of green screen effect. Yeah, look at that. Great. Uh, but now I can't see you because <laughs> I've got my lights up to like 50%. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just going to turn them down. Um... Yeah, very distracted by green screen, so apologies. Sorry. Folks. <laughs> Went off on a tangent. Went off for a tangent. There it's not go. easy Back. being green. It's <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that to me, Jerry? <laughs> I don't know. Why would you do that to me? Uh, question seven. Uh, jump scaring people. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't do it because I don't like having it done <laughs> to me. And if anyone tries to do that to me, I will lamp them. <laughs> I will deck them. I freaking love it. I absolutely love it. It's, so it's, it's as simple as that. Jump out at me and go, ha! And you're going to get either my fist in your face or my foot in your ass. <laughs> Whichever's closer. Which doctor removes shoes from asses? Depending on whether, depending on how deep, is either a general surgeon or, or a proctologist? <laughs> <laughs> up the signs sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> no I, I I'm not gonna lie I love it it's, it's about the only practical joke that I think I, I don't know why I find it so funny like I could watch um, like compilations of like Ellen DeGeneres I don't like as I've said this before I'm not a massive fan of Ellen herself but on her show, she'll do jump scares with the celebrities. So she'll, you know, there's, she's got a table next to them. So occasionally someone will jump out or somebody will just sneak behind them and go, bah! and, and, or she'll hide in the, in the dressing room, like bathroom and again, do the same. I don't know why I find it so funny. It just, it just really tells well, me. So I like watching them. Yeah. So I like yeah. watching Jackass and they do a lot of that on Jackass as well and surprise Slaps, each other. Slapstick that kind of thing. Genius. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I love watching it. I, I don't like doing it. I've never done it and I don't like being uh, on the receiving end of it. But I love watching it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't... Do you know what, If it's... Again, if it hasn't got the tension build up, if I don't know what's going to happen and somebody just suddenly goes, but I'd be like, you... I, you know, probably a few swear words. But afterwards, I think, actually, that was probably quite funny. Yeah, I, I can I, I can always see the humorous side like later on. If you then take things <laughs> like, uh, I'm just trying to think now. Um, like again, again, it just it just it's just if I don't have that tension, if it's just a surprise, then gr it's great. Yeah, th there's one. Oh, what was that YouTube clip? It was absolute genius. So there's that horror movie of that with that nun. It's a really creepy nun. Mm. So obviously the wife or the girlfriend dressed has dressed up like that nun and done the makeup like like her really well mm. and somehow managed to go and stand on top of the fridge <laughs> and when the boyfriend or husband's gone 
and set the camera up so the boyfriend and husband switch, got, come into the kitchen, switch the light on, open the fridge door, grabbed something and looked up and gone, oh, and you literally <laughs> could yeah. see. I've never seen such fear. But yeah. but I would be, because she's just kind of crouched down on top of the, the fridge. Yeah. And you would absolutely shit yourself. Yeah. I'd be on the receiving end of that. Less of a fan of maybe, like, especially if it's something that, like, continues. So if you've jump scared someone and then you chase them, that to oh, me is a step too far. Yeah. There is um, there's a, there's a, a, a couple that I follow, well, a family that I follow on um, TikTok. Um, where they they do confetti cannons everywhere. Like yes, American. I've seen them. I've yeah. seen that. Jo- yeah, Joe and Lindy, I think it's that's something. right. Yeah, and they'll and they also do like balloons, and they're filled with some kind of. This is going to sound really dodgy, but some kind of white substance. Yeah, I think like shaving cream or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they'll put the balloon like they'll hang the balloon above the doorway, and then he'll that's shoot right. the balloon just as she's walking through, and it hits her, and then they'll fire the confetti cannon off, or, you know she's hidden in like uh just there was one that i saw recently where she's hidden in um a, a dry cleaners kind of bag for a suit and she's got the confetti cannon just popped out and then he walks to the door and then she's just, and he's not expecting it and she just goes bang so he jumps and then there's confetti <laughs> everywhere. It's, like, it's genius it's like that is the type of innocent <laughs> fun that I, I i'd absolutely love and it's the only time i really I would, it's probably the reason why I am bloody single, to be honest, isn't it? Like I, I <laughs> that would just be so much fun to have as a couple. Or um, what's the other like joke that I that I like? Oh, is where you know husband or wife turns returns home and it's there's a, there's a water pistol or like a Nerf gun and it says um, I'm hiding in the house. Whoever wins, whoever loses, has to cook dinner. And then Brilliant. goes around this, and th- th- you know, there's one where she gives him this tiny little Nerf gun, and then she comes out with like this, this machine like, gun in the machine gun. Ho ho ho! I have a machine gun, <laughs> Nerf gun, and she takes him out. Ah, th- that to me, that's genius. That those types of things, those types of jump scares, great. That's Excellent. Fun, <laughs> Question eight: uh, Going to Mars or other planets? Or, as I'm reading it, plants. It does say plants. <laughs> I just, it does say plants. So I, I'm glad you clarified it, because I assumed it planets, but I thought, no, but there is, a, is there a plant connection here? So I don't know. <laughs> Going to Mars. I've got no interest in doing it. I would love Elon Musk to go to Mars so I don't have to see his face anymore <laughs> or hear about him or hear about his cryptocurrency or some other bloody <laughs> harebrained scheme he's come up with. I'm sick and tired of that man. I'm sick of him. I'm sick of Bezos. I'm sick of all of them. Just all go. The rich ones. <laughs> Do me a favour. Permission to swear. Your permission granted. Just fuck off to Mars. <laughs> Do us all a favour. Fuck off to Mars. There's no internet connection out there either. So <laughs> you'll be like, fire. oh, I've got some Starlink. I'll put a satellite up there. <laughs> it's bloody hell. Just fuck off to Mars. Leave us alone. No one's interested anymore. You creepy bastards. <laughs> Just go. I. I don't. I don't know if I'd want to. I'm really on the fence on this one. Really? Yeah. What do you want to go to Mars for? There's no Nando's. <laughs> for a start. That's it. Swag it. <laughs> I mean, do I need to go any further? I'm. If I was like 80 years old and I ha- I knew I had like, I don't know, a month left to live, I might be like, fuck it, send me to Mars. But yeah, with stuff to live I'd for. I'd rather go to like... the moon. I'd rather go to the moon. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I put, I mean, I put plants, but I should have put planets. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I should have read our notes before I. Ah, but moon's not a planet, it's a moon. Satellite. Oh, there you go. That'll be the one. Satellite. Yeah, I would probably prefer to go to the moon over Mars. Yeah. Now I've just got now I've just got a grand day out um, with Wallace and Cromit stuck in my head. Cracking cheese, Cromit. I love that. that. With that flipping skiing robot. The skiing fridge. It looks like a fridge, doesn't (laughs) it? It does look like a fridge with wheels. Yeah. Love it. 
I absolutely love <laughs> it's that. It's like he's putting the quarter in it. To... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> the bit that really makes you laugh is when he gets the telescope. Because you just expect it to go up here, and it doesn't. He just kind of goes dunk like this, <laughs> like really low down, and oh, yes, that's genius. One of that's a comedy classic. That is, it is. Yeah, I love it. I love and that uh, and the wrong trousers. The, well, I mean, they're, they're all brilliant. They uh, they are all brilliant the actually. Wrong trousers. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 penguin and he gets the rubber glove and. Then <laughs> And it's always the, and I'm now showing Jerry. I can do like the the Wallace, yeah, the Wallace brilliant. hands, where you've got like the tips of your fingers are touching the inside of your knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And then it's go. We forgot the cheese, Gromit. We forgot the cheese. <laughs> oh dear. And you got the slow sizzle of like <laughs> using like <laughs> like a match and a string to light this rocket. <laughs> It's brilliant. But they still have a countdown that's somehow accurate. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> it's genius. It's genius. Genius. <laughs> I mean, that was a quick question, so we can probably move on quite well. Um, <laughs> question nine, War of the Worlds. Good story. I didn't know it was a story. I only know it as a um, musical. Oh, really? Mm. It, was, it was um oh god who's the original author and it was was it narrated by orson wells jeff wayne's musical version of war of the worlds that's the only one i know it of um and it's my mum's second most hated film uh, a second most hated <laughs> uh, album that my dad owns because my dad owns the um when i say album, album. it's a it, it's like a it's a um a vinyl oh really mm, okay yeah. because it starts off no one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched and it's a really <laughs> good it's really really good the narrator on it is fantastic um by jeff wayne um and <laughs> when for some, there wasn't still a period of time when i first listened to it but you know me and my dad were perhaps a little bit obsessed with it. So every now and then we'd just walk downstairs and we'd just go, no one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century. <laughs> and my mum would be like, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> then to wind her up, you just go, Flash, Flash, I love you, but you've only got <laughs> 47 hours to save the earth. Which is the other bunch of musical that my mum <laughs> dislikes. Flash Gordon. I, I, I dislike musicals full stop, but... I didn't know there was a musical. Mm. <coughs> um, I didn't know it was a book. I, I, yeah, so it's it's <clears throat> it's a novel by H. G. Wells, first serialized yes. in eighteen ninety seven. Can you believe it? By Pearson Magazine in the UK. Eighteen ninety seven. Yeah, eighteen ninety seven. Oh wow! It is one of the earliest stories to detail a conflict between mankind. And an extraterrestrial race. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. But the thing is, I say I didn't know this, but as soon as you said H. G. Wells, I went, of course it is. So I must yeah, have known about the book and just not known that they were linked somehow. Yeah, and they, they serialised it on radio, didn't they? Mm. And it freaked radio, every yeah, yeah and, it, and it freaked everybody out because people thought, shit, is this for real? Yes. Yeah, it, it caused public it, panic among listeners who yes. did not know the Martian Invasion was fictional. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 and. Yeah, that's right. Most memorably dramatised in a 1938 radio programme directed by and starring Orson Welles. Yeah, that allegedly yeah. caused panic. Incredible. Yes, a absolutely. Um, yeah, but. Um, so, um, and the musical is a musical adaptation. Uh, adaptation of the science fiction novel The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells in a rock opera style with a rock band orchestra narrator and uh, letting motifs to carry the story and lyrics express the feelings of various characters <laughs> Richard Burton is the narrator which is nice oh, if you're going to get somebody to do that narration Richard Burton yeah with his voice yeah yeah he's amazing yeah 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 definitely 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 
Uh, why did you forget me? Yeah. Who is that? Was it the actress from 1984? Why do I feel I've heard more of his stuff? But oh well. Yeah. So I think that's the tick in the box for us for War of the Worlds. I mean, I've not. I I must have read the book, but I'm not sure. I haven't. I haven't read it. Watch the film. What 2012 um, one with Tom Cruise? Yeah. Which, from memory, was average. Pretty good. No, I thought it was pretty good. I wouldn't watch it again. I think yeah. I've watched it twice, but I wouldn't watch it any more than that. Yeah. It was probably one of those what I refer to as good terrible films, where it's 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 all right. You know, it's two and a half, two hours of just being able to switch off and watch something a bit pants but it's entertaining it's entertaining it's a bit creepy at times yeah it it does build yeah the special effects are good I yeah, I, I like it I can't fault it it's, it's too Hollywood but yeah I mean it's got Mr. a brilliant effect yeah exactly question 10 and it's the one that we've referred to a couple of times the matrix theory yeah see this is this is the point where i struggle more with ghosts than aliens because i or i don't or i don't i don't see ghosts as a um as a physical representation of something so i can't i can't perceive this like pearly white ghost like going around and doing stuff knocking stuff off counters like cats do i I see more as like ghosts are so if you take the to the matrix theory being that we're in a simulation. Yeah. Right, we are part of a computer and I like the whole story of the matrix to me makes sense. We're in some kind of simulation. There is a thing that we don't know about that is a higher power. Ghosts okay. are glitches. It's a bit like not necessarily deja vu. But, you know, the the computer should have simulated X and it didn't. It simulated Y. It's a bug in the system. Aliens are a programmable thing that has been put into the system to, to, to for us to, to take part in. Um, so I can't, you know, I fully believe about the, the, the feeling of the presence and and the, you know, that paranormal activity being an actual thing. But I can't picture like pearly white ghost. I think that's that that's the only bit I'm like not so sure about pearly white ghost. Well, well okay, wait. So, so okay. It, I don't know if this helps in any way, shape, or form. But bear in mind all the experiences that I've had. Put pearly white ghosts out of your mind. Yeah, I d- yeah. I, 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 as in, it's that's almost like a cartoon representation of yeah. I don't think that that cartoon representation is is quite is quite no, accurate, and I it, well, it, it definitely isn't. Yeah, and I I've mentioned it a few times about referring to question ten and how around the human kind of almost like arrogance if that makes sense in that your 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 theory about mankind coming back to help us as well as that that could be a time related thing but that also could be a person who's escaped the simulation type thing uh, yes 100% yeah and yeah. on top of that because the physical representation to a humans based upon everything that that I've experienced in the last 30 years we are much more akin to a virus than a um than a settling <laughs> species if that makes sense yeah you know we're not sheep that graze and use sustainably we are a take over and destroy yes and and that's where my like theory of the matrix the, the, the matrix theory i think is is more accurate and, and why i think that even with these paranormal and alien activities AI can still be involved 
because a lot of people will go ai is a thing therefore none of the other bits can be real and i think that all all three can exist they can do yeah i see where you're going with that so, yeah they could do that was a very quick like whirlwind tour of like my kind of theory i mean apart from the, the fact the matrix being <clears throat> one of the best film probably the best <sighs> film of the 90s isn't it well maybe even one of the best films of all time i would argue mm. because Not it was so definitely. mind-blowing yeah yeah um the that matrix theory is something we need to hold on to because i think it's going to we're going to be able to weave it back into a lot of mm. those conversations in the follow up where i talk about my experiences so you you could then kind of link that to well could that how would that work in the matrix Mm. could it work in a matrix i suppose you could rationalize it using matrix theory yeah and, yeah. and, I, and I i mean you know for me it's not quite as clear cut perhaps as the matrix makes it in terms of the simulation and you know what the human is actually used for i don't I don't think that quite exists yet because of how non you know when you think about it you know we do still have some things that are very good i mean we're still you know the sky is still blue it's not scorched like it is in the matrix for example but it's it's much better than it is let's say in that film for us as 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 those in the simulations so what, i think is that it? The, uh, i mean it's not what if enough. what if all of this is just a simulation that's the point true but the simulation is not at such a broken down piece that people are going to be you know actively wanting to to escape regularly i yeah it's 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 a real tricky kind of thing to explain i'm i'm not sure if i'm i'm probably not doing a very good job see yeah imagine you know we watch the matrix and you think oh okay i get it but what what if what we're experiencing what we're living in is a, a matrix reality that's hundreds and hundreds of years more evolved, thousands of years mm. more evolved than what we saw in the matrix. Yeah, may maybe we're on like iteration, I don't know, 70. Could be, yeah. You know, and we've discussed and about, the, it's discussed in there about this perfect world and how actually an imperfect world is more satisfactory. That You know, you talk about the self-help books that they actually say, that you don't want a life without problems you want a life with manageable problems because you want that satiable appetite to solve them which is why you have an imperfect world now at the moment i certainly think for god's sake give us a bloody break yeah you know it's not even funny now no it's not it, it, it's it's not it's ridiculous it's it's you know two recessions a, a pandemic some terrorist events and now a bloody world war and you're thinking oh my god yeah just not but, even go there yeah so i think but oh sorry go no 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 go on go on i was gonna say i think we're we've kind of come to like a, a like a bit where we like we could really go deep into some of this and i think we're just gonna have to do our ha a halloween special aren't we and just let rip with the jerry stories i i think yeah i think so but uh, but but I think it needs to be those stories, but we need to have the matrix theory in there. We have to, mm. and I think we need to we need to link them through to see could matrix theory explain that. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, so I, I would suggest those stories that I tell, matrix theory and parallel universe theory. Mm. Those two things need we we need to almost sense check them against those two. Yeah, yeah we'll see if there's any potential link. Yeah. yeah, and because I know Laura mentioned about parallel universes and um, the Mandela effect, which is another yes. thing that we can also yes. include. Um, absolutely, and uh, and you know, and 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 I think it'll also be good to maybe add the third element, which is about the whole. I call it like the spiritual side of things, and yes, all all the basically the side of things that we will never understand and we cannot comprehend global consciousness yeah things like that yeah 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 
So we're okay. just teeing you up here, folks, for a, a future podcast. <laughs> even though we've been discussing, I mean, I mean, according to our our thing, we've been discussing for a hundred and fifty minutes, but um, which is what uh, two hours and a half. But yeah. we did have uh, twenty to forty minutes. I'm not sure which one on uh, on on discussing our our week. Um, I think. I'm gonna. We're gonna probably skip the improving our health. I'd already written depending on time on, on, on this one because I, I yeah that's got some real deep stuff that I'd like to go into when we've maybe had a lighter podcast. Yes, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think so. I agree. I agree. We've got we've got one more conspiracy. We've got the conspiracy theory here, and uh, and Jerry's already mentioned it to a certain extent. So we're gonna round off with the conspiracy theory. Um, the conspiracy theory is. Elon Musk is just an alien trying to get home and is urgently <laughs> trying to usher humanity into the next level of technology so we can have the batteries necessary for the journey. Jerry, go. <laughs> Develop your battery, you stupid twat. Just fuck <laughs> off. And you don't need to get anyone else involved. Build your battery and piss off. <laughs> I've had enough. Not a fan of Elon Musk. No, I'm bored with this guy. Enough already. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. I can't even go and have a shit. And he's, he's there in the bathroom. He's on my phone. I put the news on. He's on the news. I open up a newspaper. He's in the paper. I go on to MSN. He's always on fucking MSN. Oh, Elon Musk this. Elon Musk says that. Elon Musk says, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Build your battery, get in your cock-shaped rocket and piss <laughs> off. Go to fucking Mars. Do us all a favour. Just shut the hell up. I'm sick of it. He has children now that he's calling QWERTY EOP and fucking <laughs> X3, fucking XR3i. Yeah, that's What they used to call Fords back in the 80s. <laughs> he's yeah. calling his children. Just... Fuck off to Mars. I've had enough. I've really had enough. <laughs> we have a Jerry rant. Yay! <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I would uh, basically, I, it would not surprise me if he is an alien. He's not an alien. He's just a knob. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You don't want to give him, you don't want to put him on that higher pedestal. No, just fuck it. No, actually, I've changed my mind thinking about it. I, I agree. I agree because he's way too greedy and too. What's the phrase? Narcissistic. Yeah, he's too much like a human to not be a human. Yeah, exactly. In terms of like the again that arrogance and 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 elements. Of, he's not enlightened that. enough to be an alien. He's just yeah. a knob. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my opinion, by the way. Hashtag I'm sure he's a very nice guy. Hashtag just saying. I don't know. I don't know if he's a nice guy or not. He's too rich, definitely. No, uh, he is. Jeff Bezos need to give some money out to the. And it could be, yeah. They yes, they do. Don't understand the logic. You you do have to question the mind of somebody who. You have to question. The. I'm trying to think of the words here. <clears throat> you kind of have to question the integrity of somebody who's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions mm. in wealth who could literally tomorrow, just one of them could end world hunger mm. if they were to put, I would say, what, maybe 10% of their their wealth into a project to end hunger they could do it but they don't yeah easy easily right so so let, let's let's look at this in terms of scale so imagine you've got a briefcase that's got you've got a million in cash in a briefcase and you walk somebody you walk past somebody who's on the street begging for some money and you say, yeah, do you know what? I'd rather go and get myself a Nando's. 
You know that. And I'd rather I'd rather video myself my whole Nando's experience and tell everyone what a great experience I'm having in Nando's than give you a tenner so that you can eat or to give you 50 quid out of my million so that you can go and have somewhere to stay tonight, have a meal, have a bath, have somewhere to stay. I mean, it, it, it takes it takes some... You, you've got to be... Your brain is not wired right for you to think to think literally all you're doing with your wealth you're thinking yeah i want to go into space you know you're a fucking child we've yeah. got we've got the the planet is on a in a it's on a course to absolute man and mankind it's yes. on a course to fucking destruction and absolutely. all that's going through the minds of these knob ends is just i want to get i want to get to mars i want to go to space you fucking child. <laughs> there are people dying. You don't give a shit. I, and, and, and I think, for me... What a knob. The, the, <laughs> you know, I refer to it in, a, in that arrogance of, of humans. And, you know, we've discussed, you know, we discussed offline a little bit on some of the other things that we wanted to, that we were, you know, we're not, we're not going to discuss online. Um but it is, it's all of it is around, as soon as you can hit selfishness, as soon as you hit selfishness, that's, that's when money, wealth, fame, things like that will, will do that. And, you know, I will happily hold my hands up and say, I'm the same to a certain extent, maybe not on a grander scale, but, you know, I, I the the way that the human race is conditioned at the moment is to that's how you accept because we are a survival uh animal so to speak you know the, the whole point of us is to try and survive and at the moment the way to survive in 2022 is to have attention and earn lots of money so you can survive in the capitalist democracy that we've kind of built up and interesting the interesting thing about that means that you know i'm guilty of it i'm guilty of being like yes i want more attention yes i want to look good on social media yes i want to feel good about this that and the other and then and then you don't because who you know social media <laughs> um and yeah and then you get people at the top that just seem to really personify this about yes i've got 96 billion pounds in wealth and i'm going to give you know, I, I could, you know, literally, you know, it's it's probably not quite that simple. You know, we're probably oversimplifying it. They could solve world hunger, but they certainly could save quite a few people. Um, you know, they I'm sure... Bring people out to, so to redistribute the quarter of their... If, if you had Zuckerberg between Zuckerberg, Bezos, Gates and Musk, if you said to them give up 10% of your wealth, your entire wealth each, and redistribute it across the population. I'd love to know how many billions that is and what an impact that would have to everybody in terms of wealth in the world. So that just, that would be an interesting... Uh, let me see if I can do like wealth. He's 100, 190 billion. Apparently, right. Elon Musk is two hundred and sixty-six billion. Right, flipping egg. How much is Gates? Uh, one hundred and thirty-four. And Zuckerberg? Uh, I don't know. It's not. He's not on the on the, the thing. But probably someone. Someone. Oh, I've just got to do. Musk, Bezos, Arnold. What does he own? Oh, he owns Christian Dior. Bill Gates, Larry Page, our oh, owner of Google, Warren Buffett. Uh, I don't know the other one. Steve Barmer's up there because he owns that. Mark Zuckerberg, I don't. He's not in the top ten. Amazing. He's not in the top ten. Okay. No, it's interesting. Um. But y you know, l let's just take so ten percent. That's what a billion maybe two billion if we round it up no no wait a second how much wealth have we got we're we talking about oh, so 10 percent. did you say 10 percent? oh yes yeah, it's, it's 20 billion 
20 billion. Right. Let's say another 20 billion for Musk. And then let's say another 20 billion for Gates. So you're talking like, roughly. Let's, let's say 60, so 60, 60 billion. billion. 60 billion. Is that enough to give um, people in the world? Well, I'm talking about, wait one second, I'm not talking about giving it to everybody. I'm talking about giving it to people who are below the poverty line. So then you want to take, a, you want to, to calculate how many people are living below the poverty line. And then, huh. then you take your 60 billion divide by the number of people living be, below the poverty line. And it'd be interesting to see what that figure is. It's interesting. It's, it's difficult to do that because I mean, 1%, oh, sorry, 90, 99%, something like 90% of the wealth is owned by 1% of the people or something stupid like that. So there's quite a yeah. lot of people that, that would be, quote, air quote, below the poverty line. But what's interesting is, you know, you could still take that 60 billion and you could save a fair number of... Well, no, wait one second. Being below the poverty line is not sitting in that 99%. You got one, you got majority of the world's wealth held by the top 1% mm. or 1% of the 1%. It's It's very, very disproportionate. Yeah. But you've only got a lot less. Yeah, it's, it, a lot less. It's, it's a lot less in terms of people actually below the poverty line. Mm, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I think the, the short answer is we don't believe he's an alien because he's too human and too arrogant. He's <laughs> human. To... Exactly that. I mean, this is our opinion, so we could be wrong, but definitely. But definitely. but do you know what? Do something to prove otherwise because mm. it's through actions no one's ever gonna you know i'm not mates with musk and i'm not mates with bezos so i can only judge based on what they do and all i see them do is talk about fucking off into space or fucking off to mars yeah absolutely or you know some other pointless exercise, exercise. pointless pointless right we have been recording for quite a while and we've <laughs> teased a lot in our on our podcast um, yeah for going forward uh jerry do you want to finish this up with your final thoughts on just what we've discussed all <laughs> overall i think the what makes people rich in this world is is being compassionate for other people and what they can do for other people and how they can make somebody feel so you can have all the money in the world and if you can't make somebody feel good and you can't make them laugh you can't make them happy or make them feel secure then what's the point mm. and there's so much in life to be experienced as well that money can't buy you so those those experiences that i've had for example but what i'd classify as a paranormal experience you can't buy that mm. It doesn't. It, I I could have I could have billions, but I couldn't buy those experiences. And I've had some of the most incredible experiences. And I think back on it that I didn't ask for. I don't know mm. why it happened, how it came about. So there's a lot. I, I I suppose message final words bit rambly. But my message is we need to step away from things which are just superficial because there's a lot more mm -hmm. going on there's a lot more that we need to do spirituality plays a big part in that and th there's a lot more there's a lot about this world that we don't know there's a lot mm. that we need to learn so to your point we are as a species very arrogant mm -hmm. and we need to stop being so arrogant yeah 100 percent. and 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 i and i fully accept that i am part of the problem as well as much I'm as part of the problem we're all part of the problem to some to the greater or lesser degree but really Dom you know take a look at, at us you and I conversations that we've had our mentality our outlook on life mm. you know we think differently to the average person yeah in a good yeah. way in a good in a, in a good way and I'm sure there's others that that do as well but we definitely are tr uh, you know and this is one of the reasons why i love the podcast is we wanted to try and be somebody that could step forward um brilliant i think i think 
I think we'll finish that for today. What a Dom, podcast. Thank you. What a podcast. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> oh, there we go. The first wow there you go. podcast. <laughs> well. Wow. It comes right at the end. <laughs> Folks, thank you ever so much for listening. We do really appreciate it. Uh, again, we're trying new things, new topics with this podcast, and we're just we're just having a great conversation. So we're just very grateful for you to come along for the ride. Um, please uh, leave us comments, messages on thoughts, feelings, and anything else that you'd like us to discuss. Um, and thank you very much for listening. And hit like, hit subscribe. Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you on the next one, folks. Take care, everyone.